I'm gonna show you a simple way to get started editing videos using CapCut. CapCut is a completely free editor. It's available online, it's available for Mac and PC, it's available on the iPhone. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use it on Mac or PC. It's the best way to use it on a computer if you're gonna edit more than one video. And I've been editing for 15 years and I think CapCut is one of the most beginner friendly tools out there for creating videos, especially when it comes to creating social media videos and YouTube videos. Okay, to get started, go to CapCut.com. And as I mentioned, you could go ahead and try it online. So they have this option right on top. And then they have a mobile app. I covered that in a different video, but I wanna show you this one on the computer because as a real editor that edits social media videos more than once, this makes more sense. It's gonna be a lot more efficient. You could download other things from the internet to add to it, things that are really hard to do on your phone. So go ahead and click download and install the app. Okay, I have the app installed here and they do have a paid version. I'll point out some of the things that come with the paid version, but you do not need it. But for example, every time you see this little pro icon right here, that means that is a paid upgrade that you have to pay monthly for. But on the homepage, all you need to do to get started is create a new project right on top and all your previous projects are gonna show up over here if you wanna go back to them and make any adjustments. So I'm gonna do this in 10 steps. For the very first step, we're gonna go ahead and create a project. Okay, now we're inside of CapCut and I'm not gonna go too much into what you're looking at. It makes more sense when I show you what's going on with an actual edit. But over here, you're gonna import your project. This is gonna be the preview of your edited project as well as all the different clips you could preview. And down here is called the timeline. All your editing will take place down here. So three windows and this one on the right is the details about whatever you have selected. This will change constantly. And then you have a bunch of tools up here that we're gonna go over. But first step two, we're gonna go ahead and import our media right here. So if you press this import option, you could bring in anything that you're gonna use in your edit. So obviously your footage is gonna be the first thing you're gonna wanna bring in. Now, I shot a bunch of stuff on my phone, on my iPhone, I airdropped it to my Mac and that's one way to get it there. You could also just shoot it on a camera and take the SD card and put that onto your computer. So I have some footage here. And I organize my things this way, if you wanna pause it and see this kind of folder structure, but my music and footage and pictures all have different folders. But right now, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the footage folder, and I'm gonna import that. That's gonna bring in a folder that is all my footage. So if I open this up, these are the different clips I'm gonna use over here. Some are vertical, some are just regular things that are shot. This one, for example, is how I shot this video. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and also import some music. And I'll show you some resources where I got some of these graphics from, some of this music from in a second once we start editing. So step number three, we're gonna set our aspect ratio. Do we wanna go to YouTube? Do we wanna go to TikTok? In order to do that, just select any clip over here and press this plus sign right here. It's gonna add it down here when you do that. And then you'll see this option right here. It says ratio. So I like to do this now. You can do this later and resize, but then when you have a bunch of different clips, you have to move all kinds of things around later. So right now, if you wanna to go to YouTube, 16 by nine is what you wanna choose. If you wanna to go to YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Instagram Reels, you wanna choose nine by 16. And then you could go ahead, if you do this right here, you'll see the scale slider here. And then you could go ahead and kind of make it fit and then move it over. So this is how you would do a vertical video. In this case, I'm gonna actually do this for regular YouTube. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale this back down to 100% and I'll place it back where it was, okay? Now for step four, this is where we're gonna do bulk of our basic editing, okay? So basic editing is gonna be adding clips to the timeline down here. It's gonna be trimming, it's gonna be moving little clips around and changing the orders. So I'm gonna show you all that in this step. So I'm gonna delete this one. So two ways you could actually start your editing right down here. One mm -hmm. is you could press the plus sign on any clip that you see on top mm -hmm. and it's gonna add it down here to the timeline, but it's gonna put the whole clip and then you could edit it down in your timeline and take out the parts you don't want. Sometimes that's not the best way though. So another way is if you just click it once, it's gonna go ahead and add it on this side. And then right over here, you see this little line right here. So you could choose where your clip is gonna start. And this one is where it's gonna end. And if you choose that and then press the plus sign, it only adds that section of the clip, which in this case, let me just show you, if I go at the end of it right here, this is about five seconds. And you can see this is four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, 
But the entire clip, if you look up here, is 11 seconds. So this is how I trimmed it before I even added it to my timeline down here. And this is gonna be my edit now. So that's one of the easiest ways to do that. So you just kind of take the in point and the out point and change it and then press the plus sign. And then it's gonna add it right over here. Okay, so this is a little bit of a different looking clip, but you get the idea. You could just add clips. And if you don't wanna do it that way, you want the entire clip, just press the plus sign and then just press adapt right here. And it's gonna add it right at the end of this clip right over here. And then this is how you tell your whole story. So next I'll add myself over here. And this is me with a clip that I'm talking. A lot of my TikTok videos, a lot of my YouTube videos are in this style. So that's gonna go over here next. Okay, so once you add all your clips to your timeline, a lot of times you wanna make changes down here, especially if you didn't add the in and out points over here that I showed you. How do you make changes down here? Well, let me show you with a clip of me talking. And right here, I'm not saying anything. So all this section could be edited out. I'm gonna actually use the slider right here to shrink this whole thing down so you see it a little bit better. So I'm gonna start. And if you look real close, you'll see these little waveforms here. These show you that the audio starts here. And before that, there is no audio. It's kind of hard to see, but let me see. There we go. I'll stretch it out and you can see this is where I'm talking. This silent part is where I'm not talking. So I'm gonna cut all that out. So to do that is I'm gonna use a cut tool here. So they have a way to make a cut over here. And if you come up here, you'll see all these little tools over here. So this is undo, this is redo, but this one will create a cut or a split. So if you select that, now I have a cut. So if I select the part I wanna delete and press delete on my keyboard, it just gets rid of that part. Now it's not permanently deleted. If I wanted to, I could just stretch it back out again and bring it back. But for your edit, it is gone. It's not gonna be part of your edit over here. So I wanna make another split over here, go a little bit later where I start talking again, make another split there and then cut this section out too. And you can see snaps them together so there's no blank section in between. Some other editing apps, if you use them before, sometimes they leave a blank section, like a black section between. You don't want that. So you just continue anytime you wanna make edits, cut, and then you could then go to another section, cut, and then go ahead and delete. Now, if you wanna reorder clips, you could just select any clip from top or from your timeline even, and bring it in between these split points, and it'll put it right in between. So it'll go from me talking to this, to this. Now, that's sometimes not the best way to do it because in this case, it's gonna interrupt me talking and it's gonna bring whatever audio was with this little clip from my phone. So that's gonna bring us to step number five, which is called adding B-roll. So to add B-roll, when someone's talking and you wanna show what they're talking about, sometimes you wanna put that clip on top of them talking, but still keep their audio. So the way to do that is right here, I got this clip and I'm gonna add this as B-roll. Well, if I press the plus sign, it's gonna override where I was, this line right here, it overrides it. So I'm gonna click this little undo to undo that. But if I drag it and put it on a different track, like track two, it's a separate track. It just created a new track on top of the previous track. And I could move this, I could trim this, I could make it a little bit shorter like this and get, get a preview. But now I'm talking and it's gonna go to this thing that I'm talking about and then it's gonna go back to me. But this whole time, I'm still down here with my audio. So that is B-roll. And this is the best way to make your edits a lot more professional, not just someone talking, but showing what they're talking about. A lot of social media videos that you've seen do that. Now, step number six is adding music. And I also added this clip right here in the previous step. And I'm gonna show you where to get more resources to really spice up your edit. So if you're gonna do this consistently, one of the platforms that I've used for many, many years across all my YouTube videos is called Invito Elements. So all I did is I was making a World War II video, so I typed in submarine. These are all the different types of clips. And then you could go ahead and filter them from this side. And then if any of them that you like, you could go ahead and download them. They have animations. They have drone shots, all kinds of different video clips. But music I also got from here. So this is an all-in-one platform. You just subscribe and then you get everything. And they have a ton of graphics too. So if you want graphics like a YouTube subscribe icon or a thumbs up icon, they have a ton of them too. But music is called royalty-free music. With music, you can't just put any song into these videos unless you do it inside of those platforms. 
But if you are not using those platforms to do your editing, which I usually don't, you could use royalty-free music from these type of platforms instead and add it. So this is what I do for YouTube, for example. And they have millions of different songs here that you could choose from. You listen to it. If you like it, just press download. And that's how I added this one to the app. So let's go ahead and actually add this music. Now, if you didn't import it before, just this import button right here is going to bring you back to the folder. So this is how I selected the one I just downloaded and I imported that in. This is what it looks like. And you can see video and audio totally look different. Now I'm going to bring this line back to the very beginning of my clip here. And I'm going to go ahead and press the plus sign. And now I have a music track. So you can see the difference between an audio track and a video track. This video track does have audio along with it. And then I have this other track that's just a video track. This did not have audio. So now I got music. Now, if I go at the end of this, now my video is going to end somewhere right over here. I know the rest of this was not useful. So I'm going to make a cut here and take this out. So now the music goes a little bit too long. So I need to go ahead and bring this back to match the length of my video. You want your music and to, your video to end at the same time. And as you select this music, you'll see this panel right here. You could go ahead and fade in and fade out. In this case, I want a one second fade out. You could see that over here and the music is going to nicely fade out. Sometimes you may want a longer one, depends on the type of song. I just have it on mute right now so I could talk through it. I could go ahead and increase this here. Let's go use the slider. Let's go all the way to three seconds for a longer fade out of the music. Now that brings us to number seven, which is actually mixing your audio. So right now I am talking and I also have music playing, but the music is going to be far too loud. So mm. you see this white line here. If you drag this down, it's going to let you decrease the volume and typically negative 25. You see that number right there, negative 30, somewhere like that. Mm. Depends on what the music is. If it's like a really ambient music that is more subtle or something really booming where you really got to lower it. So you'll have to just press play. You could press the space bar or right here, press play here and then listen to it. And if it sounds too jarring, just keep lowering it so you could hear someone talking. If no one's talking and it's just a music video, well, in that case, that doesn't matter. That could just be set to whatever it was, which was zero. And you could also do all of that over here. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to zero. So every time you select the different clip, like if I select video, you can see this changes all the time. But for basic editing, we don't need to worry much about that. But that is how you go ahead and mix audio, which is the balance between the music and the person talking. And if you have sound effects too, that will sit in a different track. Now on top here, we also have text over here that we could go ahead and use. So they have a bunch of different default text. They have AI generated text and they have different text templates. Mm -hmm. I really like a lot of these text templates, although a lot of it is going to have that pro option, which is going to require you to do the paid upgrade. But here's a free one. I'm going to go ahead and click this one. It's going to download it. OK, it's going to preview it right over here. And if I like it, I'll just press the plus sign and it's going to add it to its own text track. And obviously, I don't want it to say ABC, so I could type my own text over here. So this is the manual way to type in text. Really easy to do that. And then you could go ahead and move this and put it wherever you want. But they also have captions, which is a different thing. With captions, they have auto captions. So this requires a pro version too, though. But if you press this right here to generate, I have the pro version on mine and it creates the whole caption. All the words that I said in this video will get captioned totally automatically. One of the best reasons to upgrade to a pro version. And then they give you a bunch of different options. OK, you can see all these got captioned over here. And when they get captioned, if you go up here to this text panel right here, you could actually go to these templates mm -hmm. and change what that caption looks like. So they got a lot of different fancy captions over here. So if I select one, it changes the entire style. Let me just press play. It changes the entire style of my caption. This one's a little bit too much. Let's try this one. Okay, another quick one. What's this one look like? Okay, so for social media, obviously a critical thing to go ahead and add captions and then use these templates. Again, some of these are going to require the pro version too if you manually type out some of this text. Next, let me show you effects. So on top, you could explore all these. A lot of them are going to show you all kinds of different things, like they even have AI avatars, which requires AI credit. But you have transitions, and transitions is what happens between when a clip ends and another clip starts. And you could go ahead and explore a lot of these transitions. Some of these, again, are going to be pro, some are not. So this is a dissolve, not a pro option. I'm going to go ahead and select it. And then I could go ahead and put it right here between clips. And now 
it goes from this clip and it dissolves to this clip. So you could explore transitions. I don't use transitions all that much. And they also have these effects. And effects is what goes on top of your clip to change the look of the clip. So for this clip, if I apply this effect, you could see a whole different type of style and you could really spice up your edit with these effects. Okay, so explore some of these on your own. They also have filters to change the look and feel of your video. You can make it black and white. You could really make it pop. So explore these. Again, just click on one. It's gonna go ahead and preview it for you. If you like it, just press the plus sign to apply it to your clip like this. And lastly, to share this, all you have to do is go to this export icon right on top. This is our last step. And this is gonna let you name it. So name it whatever you want over here. This is just good for organization. Export it to whatever folder you want on your computer. I usually use external hard drives to keep things organized. I'll link one in the description for you. And resolution, pretty much, you want to be MP4 and everything is should get it right by default. So you don't really need to change anything, but if you were more advanced and you wanted a 4K version of this, for example, you could go ahead and up-res it. But 1080p, MP4, the rest of it you don't have to worry about. And then this will save it to your computer. And then from there, you could open up TikTok.com, for example, and upload from the desktop. You could airdrop it to your phone, for example, to upload it. And I'll show you one more option with the sharing option, because once you do that, again, this might require some of these pro versions too, but you could go to TikTok or YouTube directly from here. So you could sign in the accounts from there. And it lets you post it privately with all the settings that you want and then open up your apps and then post it. So all the resources are included below and I'll include a video to a version of CapCut that you could use on your phone. So on your iPhone or Android, they have a version. Now that you know how to use it basically on your computer, it's really easy sometimes on the go to use it on your phone. A little bit more limited, but also a really good option too. The most popular editing app for the iPhone and Android. I'll go ahead and link that video here too. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.